Hi again, this is Kevin with Custom Micro, and today we're starting a multi-part series on the configuration guide for the S3410-48TS-P FS switch. This is part one. We'll be covering VLANs and default static routes. Let's do it. The default IP address of the network switch is 192.168.1.1. So in order to set up this switch, you will need to set your IP address of your network adapter on the same IP range, the same subnet. I have my laptop plugged into port one of the switch, and I have set that IP address of this network adapter to be 192.168.1.200. You do not need to set an IP gateway for this setup. You just simply need to set an IP address and subnet mask. Once you put the IP address into a web browser, you're introduced with a login screen. The default password of this switch is admin, and the default username is admin. So you simply type admin, admin, and log in. It's going to let you know that your password is not very secure and it's going to ask you to set a new password. So go ahead and do that for this next step. Upon first login, you're met with a wizard. You have an opportunity to change some basic settings of the switch. If you intend to use this switch as just a standard layer two network device, I would suggest go ahead and set your IP address that matches your IP range, and just do that right here from the wizard. In our case, we're going to be using the Layer 2 Plus features. We're going to be using routing, DHCP, we're going to create some ACLs, etc. And so for now, we're going to just cancel and skip this step. The first thing we want to do is create the different VLANs for our network segments. So underneath the Favorites tab, we'll select the first section, VLAN. You'll notice by default, the switch already has VLAN 1 configured, as we noticed earlier in the wizard. And we notice that it's untagged on ports 1 through 48, our Ethernet ports, and also on port 49 and 50, our two 10 gig transceiver ports. Because I have several VLANs to add to this switch, I'm going to choose Batch Add VLAN. If you simply need to add a range of IPs, you can type 1 through 10, for example, and it will add those VLANs. For this real-world scenario, I would like to add VLAN 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 200. Therefore, I will just separate them with commas. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 200. And we'll click Save. Notice we get a message, Add Succeeded. Click OK, and there we go. We have VLAN 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 200. So we'll go over here to VLAN 10 and click Edit. I'm going to give this a name. You'll start to see what my standard scheme is when I set up a Layer 2 Plus or Layer 3 switch. It's going to be an edge switch that's going to be routing traffic from a remote site, from a facility, if you will. So I'm going to give this a name of Inside Wired. Everything at this location that will be a standard device like a computer or a printer that will plug into the wired network, it will be on VLAN 10. We'll save that. We'll go in and edit VLAN 20. This one will be inside wireless. So all of the wireless clients that connect to the internal corporate network, they will be connecting on VLAN 20. We'll edit VLAN 30 and give it a label. This is going to be the VLAN for our IP phones. So we're going to call this VOIP phones. VLAN 40, we're going to use for IP cameras. So we're going to name it IP cameras. Then VLAN 50 will be our guest network. So we will label it accordingly VLAN name, guest network. And finally, VLAN 200, we'll edit that and we'll give it a name, we'll call it Transit. This will be the VLAN that will route traffic to the core switch. Now that we have all of our VLANs named, let's move on to the next section. 
And what we're interested in is this section L3 port. We're going to select SVI so we can add some layer 3 routed VLANs. We'll choose our first VLAN we created earlier, VLAN 10, which is our inside wired. We're going to give it an IP address of 10.127.10.1. The subnet mask, I'm going to set to 255.255.254.0. That just gives us some additional IP addresses in this range. The range will start with the gateway IP of this VLAN, which will be 10.127.10.1. And the last IP in the range that will be available is 10.127.11.254. We'll click Save. And we have successfully configured a routed VLAN. Let's go ahead and we'll create the rest. You may recall that there's one additional VLAN I created earlier, that's VLAN 200. So we'll click Add SVI, VLAN 200. The IP address here is going to be a little bit different. This is our transit port. This is the what's going to route traffic from this remote office, this satellite office, if you will, to our main core switch or our router, depending on the scenario. And so we're going to go ahead and give this a different IP address. We're going to give it an IP address of 172.16.127.2 because the router or the core switch will be 172.16.127.1. We could shrink that subnet mass down quite a bit. I'm not sure if you've ever used a CIDR calculator, but if you have or have not, you can set this to 255.255.255.252 and that will only give you two IP addresses. That will give you 172.16.127.1, which will be the IP address of your core or your router. And then the IP address we've just set on this VLAN for this switch, 172.16.127.2. And we'll click Save. That's also known as a slash 30 in CIDR notation. So now that we've created our VLANs, the next thing that we need to configure is under network and routing. We want to set our static route, our default route. So all traffic will go through that 172.16.127. So we're going to choose the egress port to be VLAN 200. The next top address is 172.16.127.1, and we're going to click Save. That's how easy it is to create a default route on this Layer 2 Plus switch. So now all of our VLANs, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50, their default route is the next top is 172.16.127.1 in this scenario, which will be our router. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so you can catch all the other parts of our configuration guide for this FS S3410-48TS-P network switch. Bye.